Hey guys, got this little tester here from eBay. It's a uh, just a USB like load tester. Got a uh, MOSFET on the back and just dial it up and down and it'll um, draw a certain amount of current to whatever you set. I've got a, this other one here which is just two resistors and you flick the switch here. LED goes red and green depending on if you've got one amp or two amp. One resistor or two resistors. But um, this one gives you a bit finer control. You can actually dial in an exact, an exact load. Um, it doesn't have a display on it though, but that's alright because I usually just plug it into one of these things, shows the voltage and current, and that will plug into your device or into the cable or whatever you're, you're testing. So let's have a bit of a closer look at this thing, see how it works, and we'll um, see how it performs as well. So take a close up look at this circuit board and see what we've got. We've got the usual USB port on the end here, two uh, transistors or maybe voltage regulators. I couldn't actually find any information on the. Uh, the part numbers, so I'm not sure exactly what they are without chasing out the whole circuit, but that's not a, a big problem. We've got our 10 turn pot here with our nice knurled knob so we can easily turn it up and down. That's to set what current we're going to be sinking. A plug here which comes to our fan, which is then sitting on top of our heatsink. That heatsink is for our power transistor. That's a TIP122, just a standard. Darlington transistor. Um, we've got a uh, LM358, that's a, a dual op amp sitting over here, a couple transistors and our uh, current sensing resistor sitting over here. Now the way this works is we set a voltage using this potentiometer and that is then measured by our, our op amp, one of the two in the package. It's the set up to then compare that set voltage to the voltage that's being read across our current resistor here. What happens then is that op amp then will then will control this uh, this transistor so that those two values that we've set here and the one we're measuring here match. So as the current rises or drops with our load, you know if we're pulling less or more current here, the op amp will see that and will then adjust this transistor to give us a current a constant current. The other half of this op amp is also being used for the fan control. You can see just here we've got a uh, RT1, that's a little temperature sensor, like a uh, temperature dependent resistor, a thermistor or something of the, along those lines. We're setting a uh, set voltage, probably in a resistor down here. It's comparing that to what's being read here, which will vary up and down with temperature. And when we reach a certain value, or go over, over a certain value, it will then send a signal to this transistor, which then turns on, supplies power to the plug here through this round pin here, and that will then turn on our fan. Conversely, when the temperature cools down, the op amp will see that and then will turn the transistor off, turning the fan off. So it's like an automatic fan control. Not too bad. So let's uh, plug this in and we'll take some measurements and see how it performs. Okay, so I've hooked this up to my power supply. I've got voltage here and uh, current here. So let's turn this on. I've got 5 volts set. Or we should see uh, 4.8 volts. And we're running 2.6 amps. That's turned up. I'll turn it right up. See how high we can go. 3.2 amps there. That fan's going to come on in a sec once that heatsink warms up. And see it's dropped down to 4.7. Got a little bit of a little bit of uh, voltage drop over the wires and whatnot, but not too bad. There we go. Fans come on, working all right. Now this uh, pot lets us adjust the current continuously up and down. So if I turn that back down, you see there we go. So you can easily set that to whatever current you want. So if you're discharging your batteries or you're testing a power supply, you can wind this up and down to see to see what uh, current and voltage you can play with and uh, test things however you feel like it. So apparently this thing will do different voltages as well, like it, it's not just for 5 volts. So I'll plug it into 12 volt. You can hear that fan's just ramped up, running on 12 volts now. And I wonder how high we can go. That's down, we'll take that up. I dare say it's going to get rather hot rather quickly. 
3.2 amp as well. So that may be a limitation of the actual, um, oh yeah, I can feel it's getting really warm now. That might be a limitation of the, uh, of the voltage dividers or the, uh, the comparators and stuff. I'll turn that down because it's getting rather toasty. Oh yeah. Ow. So I wouldn't run it on high voltage for very long. Um, simply because that gets, that gets really hot. But for 5 volts and that sort of thing, you know, testing your, your battery packs, testing your uh, charges and that sort of thing, this thing's going to work pretty well. There is one small thing that I wasn't so happy with with this thing uh, when I bought it, but it's a very easy fix. I'll, I'll show you that now. So the little thing I'm not too happy about with this thing, it's got to do with the transistor and the heatsink. That is, there's no thermal grease between the two. Easy fix though, we've got three screws, we'll take those out and we can um, get inside. So, if you're going to use this at higher power rating, you want to probably put some grease in there. I would advise putting grease in there anyway, just to make sure that transistor doesn't get too hot. You want to get the heat into the, into the heat sink and then sucked away by that fan. So if you have a look there, you can see it's completely dry. So I'm going to put a bit of thermal grease on that transistor and a little bit on the side just here. The reason for that is we've got the temperature sensor there. So I want a bit of heat to come through from the heatsink to that temperature sensor to make sure that this can turn the fan on early enough that the transistor doesn't get too hot. So a bit of grease on the side there, a bit of grease there, back together, and it'll be all sweet. So apart from that, it does seem like a pretty good device. Just make sure you've got some thermal grease laying around and you'll be all set. Alright guys, we'll see you next time.